wasn't even concerned. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hey, yo. It's your boy, Mr. Faith, a.k.a. The Game Warden. And this is WWE How It Should Be. This is our Survivor Series episode. So you already know there's going to be a ton on the line here tonight. Not only do we have two new superstars making their WWE debut, as well as a slew of title matches, but also Finn Balor has announced that he is going to cash in on the winner of Drew Gulak and Mustafa Ali. So we know that we're going to have a Money in the Bank cash in tonight as well. And because we have so much going on, and I'm so excited to get into this, I've been waiting for this for so many episodes now, and I'm sure that you guys have as well, uh, we're just going to dive straight in, okay? Timestamps are in the video. Feel free to skip ahead or around. All I ask is that you just quickly remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Uh, and if there's a dream match or a storyline you guys want to see, let me know in the comments, and I'll try to make it happen. But this is Survivor Series, and it starts right now. Picking us off, we have an NXT Championship bout. And the WWE we have the challenger, Madcap Moss, versus the, the champion. Perfect. The title holder in and let me tell you something. Uh, the you know, this NXT title, maybe not given the love that it deserves on this series so far. You know, with uh, the, the tag team champions on the show, you know, are on the NXT roster at the moment. And of course, you know, all of the women are on NXT. They've been uh, taking up a lot of the storyline on NXT. Uh, you know, the NXT title has n not necessarily been forgotten, but we've had a total of three champions. None of them have really, you know, done anything great as far as championship runs go. And I think this could be the start of that. Murphy has proven time and time again that he's worthy of holding this title and retaining it. Uh-oh, uh what do we have here? Oh, beautiful. Beautiful drop kick, beautiful maneuvering on the ropes. The Murphy right just putting on display why he's the From champ, the why he thinks he belongs at the top. And we had a, a tournament to crown our inaugural NXT champ. Uh, we you know, realigned the divisions at the start of this series. The NXT champ was uh, deemed to be a, a main eventer, you know, so we moved him up to the to the Friday Night SmackDown Dude, roster. And, uh, you know, Escobar was able to win that, but then oh, shortly the after, Chris Benoit makes his debut, makes his return. Onto the That's NXT the brand, Rebels. though. Wins the title. And then, like a week or two later, decides to defend it in an open challenge. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. A week or two later, uh, he, he decides that he wants to defend it. He's going to have a, tw uh, a number one contendership match, which I think Murphy and Madcap Moss oh, uh, were the people who, who fought for that. Murphy won, and then, of course, Murphy went on to win the title. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And Madcap steals it from him now. I saw his hand grab the rope, so I wasn't even concerned. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. No. No. Tucker. Tucker's going to cash in. He's catching in. I was going to say Murphy went on to, to beat Chris Benoit. Then he had a rematch and, and beat him again to secure the title. Madcap Moss looking for his redemption here. Wins another number one contendership spot. Comes on. Is able to finally beat Murphy in, in, in pretty quick fashion. I had no idea. I didn't even stop t telling the story because I saw him clearly grab the rope. I thought that the ref would see that, but he didn't. So already controversy here. And... Murphy may not even be able to get any sort of rematch because the title might change hands yet again. And Madcap Moss might not ever even be able to truly have redemption because I'm sure he doesn't want to take a win like that. I'm sure he didn't see that Murphy's hands was on the ropes. And I'm sure he would have wanted a rematch. But he might have the title ripped away from him here and now. But he's fighting. He's fighting hard. Madcap Moss, he's been through so much. He's been through so much, uh, so many ups and downs. He's had to deal with Baron Corbin. He's had to deal with, you know, fighting for number one contendership opportunities. He believes that this NXT title is, you know, 
something that he can oh capture and hold on to here he is finally having his moment and tucker coming in to cash in oh to rip it away from him and tucker since he's won the money to make briefcase for the nfc title we haven't seen him he hasn't had any screen time and he's a guy that you know he really needs this title he really needs a win here tonight because you know he, he doesn't draw in a whole bunch of names. He doesn't draw in a whole bunch of of reaction from the you know from the crowd from the audience and and so he doesn't get that screen time. But hey, if he's champ, we have no you know <laughs> no choice but to put him on screen, right? But to put him in matches. Ooh, and that money in the bank briefcase pretty much guarantees you a championship. A Madcap looking to put Tucker away the same way he put Murphy away. Oh, but Tucker able to kick out. Now, Madcap, you know, it doesn't really matter how quickly you were able to put Murphy away. You know, oh, a running power slam, but now the ref sees the rope break, doesn't even bother to get down there for the count. You know, it doesn't really matter how quickly you put Murphy away. Wrestling two matches back-to-back -back is never easy, especially uh, when the title was on the line for both of them. You know, but Madcap is looking good. Tucker definitely came out and surprised him. Had a very good flurry of offense. The Mad Cat has been able to bounce back so far. And now we're, we're seeing that maybe they're a little ooh, evened out. Uh-oh. What's he going for here? Oh! oh. What an elbow! <laughs> I don't even know what that was. What a corkscrew springboard elbow that was. <laughs> Wow, Tucker showing some interesting offense here. And he's got the champ, Madcap Moss, in trouble. Tucker looking to put him away. Ref's counting. Oh, Tucker unable to get the three count there. He's going to tell the ref he's got to hurry up on the count. But he's going to get right back to it. He's going to keep the offense going. And I think if you're Tucker, you can't let... Mad Cat Moss catches breath here because, oh, you got to take advantage of the fact that he just wrestled a match. You have to take advantage of, of the fact that he's got to be tired. You got to wear him down and you got to drag him into the deep end. You know, the longer this match goes, you think that the more it favors Tucker because the, the more tired Mad Cat Moss is going to be. And Tucker fighting out of trouble. Oh, what a scoop slam. Going immediately for the cover. Wow. Forearm on the face. Madcap. Able to fight through, though. Kick out of the pin. And now, though. Oh! And a discus punch there. Tucker showing again some very interesting offense, man. Oh! Some sharp counters. He looks like he's been preparing for this. He looks like it's been his plan. You know, I thought Madcap Moss... Murphy, that match was a little quick. They didn't put each other through enough to cash in, but it looks like he's been preparing for this for so long. I don't think that he wanted to wait another another pay-per-view, per perhaps. You know, another big title match, perhaps. I think he wanted to just come out and do it. But uh, Mad Cat Moss, able to give him the business there. Looking to put him away. Second time's the charm, maybe? Oh, wow. Another kick out by Tucker. This time, though, Madcap. It looks like he's calling for that power slam, that running power slam. Oh! This time, though, not going to scoop the right leg in again. A rope break. Madcap calling for the support of the WWE Universe. He needs it. Oh. Uh-oh. What's he going for here? Uh-oh. Oh! Oh! Talk about some interesting offense. Oh, but again, Tucker with the sharp counters. He's showing his preparation here. He's showing his ability to last, ooh, to, to endure all sorts of pain, and to really, really test Madcap's will. Oh, there we go. Slams that skull into the canvas. And now, ooh, oh! Golly, Tucker really showing no mercy here. Oh, and a splash from the big fella. What's he going for here? Oh, 
and again, just just on all fronts, wearing Mad Cat Moss down. Ooh, doing anything he can to. Oh, what's he looking for here? Doing anything he can to try to get Mad Cat Moss to really think about how much he wants to retain. Really think about how far he wants to push himself. And again, ooh, that springboard corkscrew elbow looks so pretty. Such a big man look, moving so gracefully. And it's going to take an, a spectacular move like that for him to secure the NXT Championship. Wow. Just wow. Introducing the champ. I'm going to be honest, the opener was a lot more spectacular than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I knew we were going to have a Money in the Bank cash-in from Finn Balor. Didn't see another cash-in happening tonight, though, uh, and so early. But uh, Tucker able to cash-in, able to win that NXT title. I'm sure there's questions still about Madcap and, and Murphy. and yeah, I, I have honestly no clue what's going to happen there. But, Bailey, Zia Lee, women's championship on the line. Now, a lot of people say bailey has got no business holding this title. And, and, you know, hey, uh, I'd have to disagree. I mean, she won it, right? Hey, um, you know, did she have any business being in the title match in the first place? Maybe not. But, you know, she worked her way in, and, and you know, we thought she deserved an opportunity, and you know, she proved everyone right. And we gave Sasha Banks. A second chance against Zia Lee. Should have been a squash match. Zia Lee beats her. Goes on to beat Shayna Baszler and Billy Kay at the same time. And secures her spot here tonight. So, you know, when you talk about do these women deserve it, of course they deserve it. But uh, I think a lot pe more people here definitely think Zia Lee deserves it more than Bailey. You know, the crowd is definitely showing their love and appreciation for Zia Lee here. Uh, Spectacular, you know, the DLC comes out, she makes her debut, you know, such a short period of time, and, and, and already, you know, she's here having this opportunity, and people would love to see her win. You know, she's a legit martial artist, and it shows in what she does. Oh, but Bailey, Bailey's a legit professional wrestler, all right? She's a legit sports entertainer. She's a legit champion, and... She knows how to dodge those things, how to get out of trouble, and how to flip the script just like that. How to slow this match down. What she's going to need to do if she wants to compete with Zia Lee. If you cannot operate at Zia Lee's pace, you can't move at her, her fast pace. You can't compete with her on that level. So Bailey's going to have to use her size, her strength, her brains. And she's going to have to take this match to levels it's never been to before. Uh, Bailey to belly from the middle rope. And she's not even going to go for the cover on that. She's she knows, you know. Bailey's Bailey's no idiot. She knows what she has to do to put matches away. And she knows that you know she's only wasting time by going for covers uh, when you know there's there's no chance that Zia Lee's going to you know stay down. For it, right. Also, you know Bailey's smart. Rolling out of the ring, she knows. Hey, if this is a countout. She's going to retain these titles. It's up to Zia Lee to get her in the ring. You know? She, she's got no interest getting back in the ring, but it looks like Zia Lee. Yeah, yeah, Bailey. She's got no interest getting back in the ring. She's going to take her time. She's going to play her games. Uh, there you go. Come back in on her. Oh! On her terms, and going to look to put the match away quickly. Now, Bailey showing that a little bit of frustration there. She's smart, but maybe she's underestimated Zia Lee. I think many people have underestimated Zia Lee being so new. We don't really know much about her, how, how talented she truly is. Uh, you know, I think it's hard to scout for her. I mean, she's only had a handful of matches on this series, you know, in this show. And, but the good thing is that neither of these women have to worry about being cashed in on because the women's money in the bank briefcase has already been cashed in. So <laughs> we're, we're good to go there. Oh, oh. But Bailey, just when you think things start to look bad for her, she slips out of trouble. She delivers some devastating offense. And now look at her. People, oh, 
the crowd really not loving Bailey in this. The crowd fully behind Zia Lee. Uh-oh, what's she going for here? Ooh, a nice snap suplex. And she's trying to keep Bailey down. Uh-oh, uh-oh. A great, ooh, neck breaker. And now, it looks like she's trying to put this one away. She's calling for it here. Wow. I don't even know what that move is called, what she calls it. I call it a falling trouble in paradise. How is that not three? But she gets a close call there. I think she knows what she has to do. She's sizing Bailey up. Oh, goes for this trouble in paradise again. But Bailey able to duck. Zia Lee, though, able to get right back onto the offense. Oh, Bailey realizes she's in a bad spot. Fight now. Oh, and then suplexes her into the corner. Her leg kind of hung up on the ropes there a little bit. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And then a Bailey to belly, center of the ring. Goes straight for the cover, hook of the leg. One, two. Oh, and a kick out. Now the look of disbelief on Bailey's face says it all, huh? Now she's she's measuring Zylea. Uh-oh. Jeez Louise, hits her with it the second time. Gotta put her out of commish. And Bailey retains much to the crowd's uh, disbelief, shock, dismay. Gentlemen, you are looking at a man. Like I said, folks, sick of being this show, this Survivor Series show, is going to be full of action. Two amazing title matches back to back. Bailey, uh, you know, hey, say what you want about whether or not she deserves to have it. You know, now that she does have it, she, you're going to have to really rip that title from her hands. But uh, we have here the debut of Darby Allen. Uh, a pretty amazing AEW talent. So amazing that, hey, we, you know, we, we decided to poach him. You know what I'm saying? Over here at WWE, you know what I'm saying? This is how we get things done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it might be the Triple H era. You know, this might be, uh, but hey, this is the Mr. Faith era. You know what I'm saying? We actually getting stuff done out here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ooh. Darby Allen, And looking to be a, a good, ooh, a good addition to, you know, our, our cruiserweight division. And uh-oh. It's going to be a good addition to the cruiserweight division, and you know, putting him up against one of a uh, one of our, you know, top level cruiserweights, man. Like here it is out. Who's been, you know, winning good matches, been, you know, putting on some good upsets, and he's been bringing it, man. He's been looking good, you know. So, uh, hey, figure might as well test the new guy out, see where he stands, and let him know that hey, you, you might have been good in AEW, but WWE. It's a, it's, a, it's a next level. It's a level up. You know what I'm saying? We're the best in the business for a reason. And this is why. You know, so we got to see how, how the, you know, Darby Allen fares. I guess a talent like Akira Tozawa. So far. Oh, looking good, though. I will admit. There's been some back and forth, but he, he's looking nice. A, a great little drop kick there. Uh, straight out of the Irish whip into the turnbuckle. And now. Yike. Here we go. Oh, some good springboard offense. But going to whiff into to, to Zawa. To Zawa going to try to take advantage of that. Go straight for the cover. I like it. Oh, the Darby, man. A, a good striker. You know, Tazawa is the master of martial arts. He's got a very good striking prowess. But Darby Allen holding his own and, and exchanging blows with him. And, and people are... Loving it, man. People want to see it. People are loving the debut of Darby Allen. As good as Akira Tozawa has been, as, as much as the crowd has been behind him in the past few weeks, they're loving Darby Allen more. Um, right off the bat, too. Which is crazy. They absolutely love Darby Allen. And hey, if you know, when the crowd loves you and you perform well in the ring. It's only good things from there, right? A great 
power bomb there. He gets lots of torque, lots of extra leverage there. Going straight for the cover and a, a close kick out. And Allen is, is, I think that reality of WWE is starting to sink in with him. That maybe that, that puts a lot of people away in AEW. But here in WWE, you know, someone like Akira Tozawa is still going to kick out of that. But he, hey, he's not letting it get to him, though. He's like, okay, I got to do more. That's fine. I'm going to do more. And, and so far, oh, oh, oh. Just absolutely uh, uh, degrading Akira Dazawa, really. That's as far as I can put it, but Dazawa. Oh, able to slip out of trouble there. Able to, oh, maybe get some of his own offense in. Oh, a shining wizard right there. Hits him with the last shot or what should have been the last shot. But uh, now I think, you know, Tazawa. Maybe underestimating Darby a little bit, you know, assuming, hey, for me, W, you know, they're they're not on the same level as we are here at WWE. Maybe he thought he could, you know, come out with an easy dub tonight. Hits him with that spectacular splash there and, and, and oh, oh, oh. And now it's hour. Looking to dig deep, looking to take it to another level. And now the crowd, I think, is just liking the match. <laughs> It doesn't even seem like they're rooting for anyone. It's, at this point, they're, they're just enjoying the action. As am I. As am I. And, uh, yeah, I can tell you this. The body shouldn't bend this way, folks. <laughs> the, the body, your leg should bend that direction, but not that far. You understand? <laughs> You're, no one's body should be in that position. Like, like Willie. You know? Uh... <laughs> So, I mean, and that's just, and that's beyond the leg. That's the leg, that's the back, it's the neck. It, it's so much there. And, and you know, Tazawa is just looking to really take advantage here. Looking to really wear Darby Allen down. And, uh, oh, Darby Allen, though, able to grab a hold of Tazawa's ankle. Oh, rip him down to the ground. An amazing back suplex here. And now he's going to try to... Oh! <laughs> Give him a little, a little shades of Stone Cold Steve Austin there. Give him the center. Now he's going to toss him back in the ring. Darby Allen. Oh! <laughs> it looked like he was wanting to put that away. But Tazawa has done such a great job of fighting out of trouble. Really the past few weeks. Fighting out of trouble. Getting those wins, those unexpected dubs. Another one here tonight. If he can ruin the debut of Darby Allen, man, that, that would be something for him, wouldn't it? Ooh. And, and a, a kick out at two. Darby still looking to fight. Oh, barely kicking out, barely getting that shoulder up. And you have to wonder how much he's got left in him. Barely able to move. He's trying to get to Zawa's body. In the right position. Oh, and he spent so much time doing that. Oh, Zao able to counter. Then Allen able to counter. Then oh, a nice one. Oh, what a stomp. Oh, the action's hot and heavy. Going straight for the cover. Oh, and a kick out by Zao now. Oh, Allen going straight. Launching himself. Up on the top turnbuckle here. Oh, nice falling splash. Straight into the cover with it, too. Oh, another kick out by Tozawa. These guys are digging deep. Oh, a nice springboard. Oh, moon salt and, and then a shot to the kidneys, and now he's going back to the top. What's he looking for here? Uh-oh. Say, oh, going to hit him with the same move, Salmon, but Tozawa going to get the knees up. Uh oh, gonna hit him with the last shot one last time. Oh, oh, and that one's gonna give him a cut above the eye, straight for the cover. Tazawa, oh, Tazawa, not gonna be able to secure the dub. And now, now, yeah, he's like, yo, ref, what? Come on, you're gonna tell me that's not three? Oh, and now Tazawa, going for the same move just one too many times. Oh, oh, and a strong slap by Darby Allen. Really emasculating there. A springboard. Oh, golly. 
Maybe he has some blood in the eye there on that one. Oh. And now at this point, I, I can't tell you who's going to win. I have no clue. It looked like Darby Allen at first. Then it looked like Tozawa for a while. Then it looked like Allen. Then it looked like Tozawa. And now I just don't know. I just don't know. Allen, is he going to? Uh-oh. Oh! Beautiful moon salt. Gets a ton of hang time. Looks spectacular flying through the air. And he's going to get the win. Wow. A well fought. A hard fought win for Darby Allen in his debut. Gotta love it, huh? Cruiserweight title on the line here. Introducing the challenger from Chicago, Illinois. And let me tell you, uh, this match is going to be interesting for many reasons. I really want to see the approach that these two men take to the match. Because, uh, I mean, you know, we, we know that Finn Balor is going to cash in. He, he's plainly announced that he plans on cashing in after the match tonight. And, you know, I mean... That's got to be in the mental. That's got to be in the psyche of these two competitors, right? There's just no other way to put it. The, you know, if you're Drew Gulak, you're thinking, I have to defend my title twice, right? You're coming into the night thinking that, okay, not only do I have to defend my title against Mustafa Ali, I have to defend it against Finn Balor as well, okay? If you're Mustafa Ali, you're thinking, not only if I want to walk out champion tonight, I have to have oh, two championship well. matches. I have to win it from Drew Gulak oh, and then keep it from Finn Balor. And so that, you know, it's like, do you try to go all out and put the match away quickly so that you can have okay, the energy the to ring. try to fight off Finn Balor? Or do you... Oh, or do you you know, fight normally, right? And, and, and just hope to, I mean, because you risk, you run the risk, right? If you go all out, you know, you run the risk of making a mistake and losing the first match. And so then it's like there's no strategy for the second match. But then if you don't go all out and this match ends up being a long, grueling match, you know you have to turn right back around and face Finn Balor. And so, inevitably, we're going to see this match wrestled a little differently than I think it would be under normal circumstances. Um, you know, and, and really both of these competitors, you know, it's a shame because Mustafa Ali has done so well. He couldn't win the Money in the Bank briefcase, but other than that, he, he's done very well. He's gotten, you know, Pins over Roderick Strong when he was cruiserweight champion. He looked good in matches that involved Drew Gulak before he was cruiserweight champion. He beat Finn Balor for an opportunity, um, you know, at, at this title shot that we have here tonight. He has proven time and time again that he deserves a, a shot at the cruiserweight title. And... If I'm being completely honest, I don't think the crowd wants to see either of these two men win. I think the crowd is wanting Finn Balor to come out and cash in now. He doesn't. They don't even want him to wait for the match to end. They want him to come out and cash in now. So the crowd is kind of watching this as like a, this match doesn't even matter because we know Finn Balor is going to come cash in. But Drew, maybe taking that first route, looking to put this match away early. Got the, the, the Gulak locked in. And Finn Balor, as close as he is to the ropes. Uh-oh. Able to roll through. Oh. Able to roll through. Get out of trouble. But you do have to ask yourself. Michael Cole you know, makes a good point there. What damage has been done? Right? Mustafa Ali, even if he can pull through this, that Gulak is a vicious submission maneuver. Even if you can survive it. Uh-oh. Are you going to be in shape 
Are you going to be in condition to wrestle another match immediately after? And, oh, and he, he goes for that slingshot and, and Gulak able to counter. Oh, Gulak, the man of a thousand holds, you know, a, a man who has excellent wrestling technique, who's been very solid on his little run here to not only get to the title, but to keep it. And he, he's just had that ability to dig down deep to take advantage of opponents' weaknesses. And to just really exercise his wrestling prowess, but uh, Mustafa Ali though hits that twice in a row, basically, and, and uh, we have a new champ, huh? And now we gotta have, we have to have a cash in, right? Finn Balor. Finn, Finn Balor. going to cut to the chase here. I mean, I'm, I'm not the person who wrote things that don't happen. Finn Balor came out. He interrupted a show to make the announcement that he was going to cash in here at Survivor Series. And, uh, I mean, it's his right to cash in whenever and wherever he wants. But, you know, I, I don't know if this was just a giant mental game he was playing to try to get Drew Gulak and Mustafa Ali off their game for the night. I don't know if he planned on cashing in and just didn't like what he saw and decided not to. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not sure. I, I'm, I honestly don't know. And um, I, I, you know, I honestly uh, just, just don't have a clue uh, really as to why we didn't see a cash-in. Maybe he he thought Tucker stole the thunder uh, of the cash-in. I don't know. Um, I really wish that I did, to be honest. But uh, nevertheless, you know, I, I guess uh, this is... You know, I mean, hey, this, this is where we're at, right? There's a new title on the line here. Um, the Tag Team Championships uh, are up for grabs, right? Uh, they're on the line. You know, we made the, you know, I'm going to call it a bold decision to unite all three tag team divisions into one. The NXT Tag Team Championships, the Raw, the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. It's all one tag team division. And the reason being is because there's only like a total of like, I don't know, 24 tag teams or something in, in, in all three divisions combined. It just didn't warrant having three separate titles. And I like the way we've been doing it so far. You know, the, the Dirty Dogs are on the NXT brand. They're on the NXT division. And uh, because... They're on the NXT division. We've seen a lot more tag team action on NXT, um, you know, because of the champs. I think, you know, if Undertaker can't win tonight, which it's looking like they will, if we're being honest, you know, uh, you know, we'll see a lot more tag team action on on Raw, and, and you know, since they have all the tag team, you know, we'll, we'll see a lot more tag team action on Raw. Uh, it just depends, right? Uh, maybe a little less tag team action on NXT. But so far, I'll, I'll be honest, though, Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler are actually looking better than Kane and Undertaker here, which is uh, – I'm saying that in the most surprised way that I can because, you know, Kane destroyed Robert Roode on Monday Night Raw. Dolph Ziggler looked good against Undertaker – but still suffered a loss against Undertaker uh, ooh, on our last episode of Friday Night SmackDown. But here they are, looking to put the match away, looking to retain. Oh, getting broken up by Undertaker. And I'll be honest, I mean, Kane and Undertaker have come in. They've dominated RK Bro. They've dominated uh, the Viking Raiders. That I think Hawk and Animal. Uh, pretty much anyone that they've competed against. Singles matches, tag team matches, doesn't really matter. They've won. They've dominated everybody. Um, and, and they've literally, the Brothers of Destruction is not, 
it's not a name for them, right? That's that's what they do. They leave a path of absolute destruction everywhere they go, and uh, I think we're starting to see, right? I think maybe you know Ziggler and Rude came out with a little bit of pride. They want to hold these titles. They want to prove why they're the tag team champions. And uh, hey, I you know no fault to them, right? I'm not gonna uh, you know knock them for that. Oh. You know, they're really stepping their, their game up to that next level, to that title defense level. But Kane and Undertaker, I think, are, are just too big and too powerful. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Okay. Nice little double elbow there. But so far, though, I will say, Rude and Ziggler have done a great job cutting the ring in half, getting tags in and out ooh, and they've absolutely decimated Kane Undertaker ooh, gonna use that long body get in the ring take one step and be able to break it up <laughs> but now Rude throwing Undertaker out of the ring and he's calling for it he's calling for it he's wanting Kane to get up he's wanting to put this away oh Uh-oh, he's going to tag Ziggler in. Maybe Ziggler's going to put this one away. Oh, Kane, no. Able to get an elbow in there. Uh-oh, oh. And now Kane. Oh. Getting out of trouble, able to tag himself out, and that's not what you want. I don't. Robert Roode was in absolute like he was in the best position possible to put this match away and he wasted time and then he tagged Ziggler in and you give Kane that time you know even with the tag in Kane able to fight his way out of trouble now he's tagging in a fresh Undertaker but wait a second now Undertaker's gonna tag Undertaker came in, fluffed Dolph Ziggler up. Now, now he's going to tag Kane back in. And, and if I'm being honest, I think that's just poor tag team strategy. There's no way Kane is in the position to come back into this match. The champion into the cover. One, two, three, Straight into the cover, though. Oh, yeah, again, Kane barely kicking out of that. He's in no condition to be in the ring at this moment. I don't know why. Uh-oh. Uh oh, and Rude. Oh, now looking to put it away. Rolls right into the cover with it, too. And then, oh, Undertaker. Gonna come in and break it up again. And Rude tossing him out again. Oh, but this time Rude stays on top of him. Rude looking to, again, calling for the end. Uh oh. What's he going for here? Oh, nice elbow drop, huh? I think he wanted to tag Ziggler in, but he realized Ziggler wasn't up onto the apron yet. So back on to Kane he goes, huh? Oh, giving him that offense. But Kane, ooh, buying his time on the ground and fighting out of it, fighting off the canvas. And now it looks like it's Rude who's in a place he doesn't want to be. Oh, wait a second. I don't know what Kane was doing there, though. Maybe a little disoriented. Who knows? Uh-oh. Oh, 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 it looked like he was going for a choke slam. No, Rude able to slide underneath it. Able to slide underneath it. Grab Kane himself. And then, oh. And, and, oh. Now Kane, yeah, getting a little frustrated. He's had a couple misses. Rude able to use that speed. Slide out of trouble a couple times. Kane's like, you know what? I'm fed up with it. Why don't you, uh, uh oh. <laughs> Why don't you run into the steel steps and it's still rude, able to dodge that. Able to get out of trouble. And now, uh oh. Perhaps thinking about what to do next here. Kane, ooh. Taking him to a place you don't want to be. If you're Robert Rude, you definitely don't want to be in in the corner of Kane and Undertaker. But you don't want to be taunting. Well, Undertaker's getting tagged in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And grabbing you from behind. Oh. And literally busting your kneecap open. 
and now Undertaker letting Dolph Ziggler get in. What is up with the... Yo, you know what, though? As great as this game is, and I'll say it. I'll say this is a great game. WWE 2K22 has been the best 2K probably since, like, 2K15, okay? It's been the best 2K for, for quite some time now. The graphics are better than ever. The, the gameplay is smoother than ever, but... You still have the the AI, the the engine behind the AI and what makes the AI do what the AI does is still lacking, right? You still have the AI, you know, clearly just letting people tag in and out, right? Like, if you're in a tag team match, you got to do anything you can to keep that dude from tagging out, right? And that should be like a thing, right? If you're if you're the AI, you got to do anything you can to tag out when you're in trouble. You got to do anything you can to keep the guy from tagging out when you know you got him on the ropes. Also, you know, it's like we see like extreme rules matches where they don't get any weapons out still. Like we still see some of that AI thinking. I will say the last man standing matches have gotten better from the AIs, but there's still some of like. There's a lot better thinking by the AI in this game, but there's still some things, you know, tag team matches and and ladder matches. There's still some things where you see like the AI not fighting to get that guy off the top of the ladder, not fighting to keep that guy from tagging in and out. I think when they can improve upon that, when they get that going, the AI is going to be a lot better a lot better to fight with, a lot better to fight against. It's going to take the game to a whole new level. Just just those small tweaks there. But a beautiful leg drop from Undertaker, which you don't usually see from him. And it's going to get a two count. And Undertaker, hey, he's look good. Uh-oh. He's look good, and he's, and he's looking to take it old school, right? Take, take Rude to class here. My. And now he's going to call in Kane and Kane. Kane looking like he's ready to come in. You know, talk about the Brothers of Destruction, them leaving a path of destruction. Kane has really been the one for them. Oh, Kane has really been the one to, to be the enforcer for them. He's really been the one to, to, you know, he's been the angry one. He's been the aggressive one. He's kind of brought it out. And Undertaker is usually a little bit more composed, a little bit more... Uh, poise during matches. He's kind of brought out an angry, aggressive side in Undertaker. And again, Undertaker breaking it up for, for what, like the fourth time tonight? But now, getting tossed out by by Ziggler. Oh, but again, we see that aggression from Kane. And now Kane's fired up. All right. No pun intended. Kane's calling for an end for this. Uh-oh. Oh! And not letting anything phase him. Oh! And Dolph Ziggler, though, trying to really distract. Uh-oh. Oh! Trying to really keep Undertaker from coming in, being able to break anything up. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. And Rude looks to put an end to it. He can't quite do it. He's got the rope break. He's going to have to. Oh! A good blockbuster there from Rude. Now trying to drag Kane away from the ropes. Trying to avoid the rope break at all costs. Trying to hook that leg, but still Undertaker able to fight Ziggler off. Able to get in position to break up the pin for, what, a fifth time? And now Rude not having any of it. Rude's going to tag Ziggler in. Can Ziggler put this match away? Oh, he's calling for it. He's calling for it. Oh, he lands the super kick. Goes straight for the cover. <laughs> the Undertaker. Oh, oh. Breaks the matchup. Breaks the pinup for a sixth time. But walks straight into a super kick. And now Kane. Kane has his bearings about him. Oh, my goodness. Ziggler and Rude could have had this match put away on numerous occasions. But the Undertaker, he's been playing the role of the spoiler, right? He's been playing the role 
uh, of the breaker upper. Right? He's the he's the home wrecker. He's the guy that comes in and, and performs the breakup. All right. He's the other man, and and he's been doing a, a darn good job at it, if, if I might add. Kane has been taking an absolute beating. Ziggler and Root have done a spectacular job of isolating the ring, of, of keeping Kane in this ring, making sure that every time they do a big maneuver, every time they get something going, that it's Kane that gets it done to him. And, but Undertaker, as great as Ziggler and Root have been, at getting all this offense in on Kane, as great as Ziggler and Root have been at, at cutting the ring in half, keeping each other fresh, keeping each other tagged in and alert, Undertaker has been just as great as coming in and breaking up those pens. This is, what, the seventh time we've seen now? And again, Ziggler... <clears throat> Maybe looking to tag out here, but Robert Roode paying so much attention to Undertaker on the outside, right? Trying to almost, you know, guard him from the ring, if you will. That he's not even looking and paying attention for the tag, so Ziggler's going to go for the cover. And Undertaker tries to slide in to break it up for an eighth time. Couldn't quite do it. Wow. Wow. No one, no one in their right mind saw these guys retaining tonight. Wow. Oh, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Uh-oh. Going after Kane again? What? <laughs> Chucking him out of the ring. Saying this is our ring, you don't belong here. I'll be honest, after the, the decimation we've seen of the Dirty Dogs by the Brothers of Destruction, I don't think anyone saw them retaining. But then for them to turn around and continue the aggression, I, I honestly have no clue where this tag team division is going or what's going to happen between these two teams. But here we have the debut of a brand new star to WWE. And yes, folks, you're looking at him. Kenny Omega from AEW making his debut against the one and only Seth freaking Rollins. And hey, props to Seth Rollins for taking this match, not knowing who your opponent is. Always something tough to do here, but Kenny Omega. One to, uh, hey, maybe you do a reenactment of you know, what Darby Allen was able to do earlier tonight, right? Wants to come in, shock the world, win his debut. I mean, hey, you're debuting on a pay-per-view episode, all right? You're debuting at Survivor Series, all right? This is a big moment. You're debuting in, and, you know, to debut on such a big of a stage and lose, ah, not a good look, right? You got to come in with a win here. Granted, you're facing Seth Rollins, right? It's like there's no, there's nothing wrong with losing to Seth freaking Rollins, all right? Uh, you know, no one should should feel bad for losing to Seth Rollins in their lifetime. But, you know, there's a lot of pressure to come in and win. You know, people are expecting you to, you know, win in your debut, right? So we're hoping Kenny Omega can, can maybe duplicate that. But then again, no one in this world would love to play spoiler to that more than Seth freaking Rollins. Okay. Um, you know, this crowd is hyped, by the way. They're hyped for Kenny Omega. They definitely want him to win. Nobody wants to see Seth Rollins, you know, spoil that. Oh, and it looks like he foot slip oh he was jumping off the top rope it looks like his foot slipped there he couldn't quite get all of it and Kenny Omega oh gonna take advantage of ripcord knee strike there maybe taking a page out of Rollins but oh and a good springboard cross body on the Rollins now Omega oh oh what's he doing here oh a little shadow boxing a little in and out getting to the side of Seth Rollins getting in his head, maybe. Very hard to get into the head of Seth Rollins. 
But hey, Kenny Omega's gonna give it a try, right? Oh, We're gonna have oh. Omega rolling out of trouble. The crowd, hey, it's, they've been put through a lot, all right? Lots of ups and downs tonight. Already lots of shocking matches. But here we are, just over halfway through the pay-per-view. And uh, again, another major surprise. But the crowd starting to slowly get their energy back, starting to get into this, starting to get behind Kenny Omega. Oh. Every time he lands a move, the crowd, oh, getting involved. Oh. It looked like he was going to go for a, a pin attempt right after that power bomb, and Seth Rollins instantly kicking out. But you know, being right in the line of sight for that knee to the face, and jeez. Now Kenny Omega looking to put this one out of out of out of commish. All right, wanting to scoop up the leg here. One, two, oh, and a weak kick out. A weak kick out. Notable to say. A weak kick out by Seth Rollins there. Kenny Omega looking to put this one in the books. He would love to come out and win his debut Survivor Series. Oh! And he's going to get that. He's going to hook the leg. And Seth Rollins is still going to kick out. Seth Rollins, that ability, that drive, that hunger to just be an absolute jerk. <laughs> You know, that that want and desire to do nothing more than ruin Kenny Omega's life, his career, his debut here tonight, is what is driving Seth Rollins. This and, and you know, honestly, you have to love it, though, right? You have to love when a, when a superstar can use something other than a title you know, other than a shot at, at being the champ to motivate them in every single match. Oh, and you see the 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 will, the spectacular offense from Seth Rollins here, a pedigree, a curb stomp. After kicking out of su such amazing maneuvers from Kenny Omega, you know, you have to love it. And this is what gets the crowd hype, right? Now the crowd's involved. Fully here. Oh, jeez. Gonna give him a just drop him really on the back of the neck there <laughs> across the knee. Hit him with a 450 splash. And he's gonna go straight for the cover, rightfully so. Dead center of the ring, no rope break in sight. Kenny Omega able to get the win. Hey, some people not really loving it, some people absolutely loving it. Kenny Omega. Still going to have to prove himself, but looking good here tonight. And, uh-oh, Seth Rollins. Hey, look at this. Show of respect, huh? Seth Rollins going to extend his hand, and Kenny Omega going to oblige. Wow. What a debut, huh? All right, this is our co-main event. The WWE Universal Championship is on the line, but perhaps more importantly than that, the, the title of greatest of all time could be assigned here tonight, all right? We have your 17-time world champ, Ric Flair, looking to defend his title against the 16-time world champ, John Cena, big match John. And he's not even looking at the title, right? There's a different title that these men are fighting for here tonight, and it's who is the greatest of all time, all right? Uh, you know, when you talk about the greatest of all time, you talk about Ric Flair, you talk about John Cena. Some people would even throw Hulk Hogan in that conversation. You know, and you talk about The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, but you look at their runs, you look at their runs of greatness, how many years they were on top, and and then you look at people like Ric Flair, who, you know, 16-time world champ, you know, uh, uh, wrestled for so long, okay? His last match in real life was in 
2022, and yes, I know you guys can probably hear someone with their very loud motorcycle passing by my house, but that doesn't negate the fact that we're talking about greatness here. We're looking at pure greatness here, and we look at John Cena. He was on top of this business for well over a decade, probably 15 years. I mean, I'd say 2000 to 2015 you know was his time right maybe 2003 to 2018 it was all John Cena okay for well over a decade John Cena was the man he was the champ okay and you see here you know oh, Ric Flair making his staple on on you know styling and profiling all right you know, showboating and gloat. All right. Meanwhile, John Cena made his entire staple on hard work, perseverance, never giving up, showing ruthless aggression. And, and we see these two styles. We see these two, you know, taking different paths to the top, right? Staying at the top in, in very different ways. We see that coming together here tonight. And, and, you know, hey, a prime Ric Flair, a prime John Cena. The question has been asked, who is indeed the greatest of all time? Who is indeed the best of all time? And, you know, over the past month, uh, uh, Ric Flair able to dethrone who we thought would be impossible to dethrone, though, you know, Brock Lesnar. Again, just proving how great he is, right? Ric Flair performing that task. And then, you know, John Cena comes out. And he says, look, this is something more than, than the title, right? This is about greatness. This is about who's the greatest of all time. And Ric Flair was on commentary at the night, and he happily accepted the challenge. And for a month now, we've been talking about who the greatest is, right? And we've seen these two, you know, have been put to the test by the bloodline. We've seen these two in, in tag team matches with each other. And... You know, seeing them having to work together and, and trying to, sh you know, one up each other in tag team matches. And now we see each other, you know, they're pushing each other to the limit. STF locked in, but Ric Flair says, hey, man, I'm going to fight out of that. You want to talk about submissions? I have one for you. Will we see it? I don't know. Oh, oh. But that's something. That's a new level of aggression we see from John Cena there. Uh oh. Uh oh, give him the little salute to the WWE Universe. And oh, oh, that inverted suplex. But you see Ric Flair's leg hit the apron there on the way down. I don't know. You take a horrible spill onto the floor, then you have your your knee, your leg hit the apron like that. John Cena's looking to be in in very good condition here, but uh oh. Looked like he was going to go for the attitude adjustment. Ric Flair going to put a quick end to that. Going to get him in the corner. Going to hit him with a chop. And now we see some back and forth. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh! Ric Flair showing that slickness, huh? Showing his ability to take, take things. Ooh. To, to be crafty, right? And that's kind of how Ric Flair ooh, operates. He's crafty. He's slick. But John Cena... Willing to throw a new wrinkle in his game here and there. Nice little, uh-oh, sunset powerbomb. But it's not going to be enough for, for someone as great as Ric Flair. We're going to see a lot tonight here for sure. Oh! We're going to definitely see a lot here tonight. Oh! From both of these men. And now John Cena again going to the top. Something you don't see very often from him. Oh! Gonna go for that patented leg drop from the top. You don't see it very often, but when you do, he's able to land it. He's had a lot of success with it in the past. But again, Ric Flair showing that craftiness, showing that ability to slide out of trouble. And, and hey, you know he's been called the dirtiest player in the game, right? Is he gonna push the boundaries of the rules here tonight? You bet he is. You know, is he gonna choke John Cena out? You bet he is. Is he going to use the ropes for extra leverage? You bet he is. And, hey, if the ref doesn't see it, the ref doesn't see it. If the ref does see it, hey, he's going to take full advantage of that five count. You know, 
Oh! And now here in the corner, that's not where you want to be with Ric Flair. Oh! Oh, that chop you can hear cutting through the crowd noise even. Uh-oh! And again earlier, he said, hey, you want to talk submissions? I got one for you. He's got the figure four locked in. John Cena's in the center of the ring. He's got no choice. The only way he can get out of this. Wait a second. Okay. Whoa. Oh, we lost one of the lights in the rafters for a second there. But, and I think with that kind of threw Ric Flair off his game. He lets, he lets up off the figure four. Goes straight for the cover, though. And yeah, he's going to retain. Look at him. Look at, look at John Cena's eyes. They're glossed over. He must have passed out from the pain. Well, I think if, if any man can call himself the greatest of all time, right? Hey, 17-time world champ. No one's no one's matched it. A win over the 16-time world champ, John Cena. If this isn't synonymous, the greatest of all time, I don't know what does, folks. Now the match we've all been waiting for for quite some time. We have Team Bring It, The Rock, Umaga, Yokozuna. Versus Yoko Team Zuna Big Dog, huh? Team Jimmy and Jay Uso. Uso. Roman Reigns. Uso. And it uh, looks like Jay Uso is going to kick things off with The Rock. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here we have... Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Going for it immediately. Tequila Sunrise and A. Hey, Roman Reigns, Jimmy Uso getting in the ring to prevent anybody. Keeping The Rock. Uh, you know, from having to kick out of that himself. We have ourselves here a traditional Survivor Series style matchup, but instead of the five-man matchup, we, we have a, a three-man match this year. And this is for a lot, really, truly. You have to think, uh, you know, this feud has been going on, this family feud has been going on for uh, months now at this point. And... Uh, we've seen them push each other to higher and higher levels, right? Uh, you know, the old iron sharpens iron thing. We, <laughs> The Rock and Roman Reigns both separately have, you know, individual wins over John Cena and Ric Flair, who we just saw compete for the top prize uh, in this business, you know. And, you know, the two of them on Friday Night SmackDown able to work together well enough to beat John Cena and Ric Flair in a tag team action. So you have to think that whoever wins here tonight, whichever team wins, whoever gets crowned the Tribal Chief, whoever is deemed the head of the table, is probably going to have a title opportunity at Royal Rumble. But that's if they can actually put this to bed. They've already had a match to determine who the Tribal Chief is at Hell in a Cell. The Rock won fair and square. But Jimmy and Jey Uso refused to acknowledge him as the Tribal Chief. They refused to acknowledge him as the head of the table. They've gone as far as to say that he's an old, washed-up has-been that just can't accept the fact that someone younger and better and more talented than him is running the family. And they could be right. The Rock is the one that brought this entire thing up. The Rock is the one that has said, hey, you lost your title. The Usos lost their titles. Where, where Are you the head of the table? Are you the tribal chief? Where are you leading this bloodline to exactly, huh? You know. And, and all he did was challenge Roman Reigns' authority, and Roman Reigns puts up the entire tribal chief, the entire head of the table spot up for grabs, thinking he had no chance. And The Rock able to get the get the dub in a clean way, I might add. But you know the Umaga and Yokozuna, hey, they're fully behind how these things have been settled. They say, hey, The Rock won fair and square. He's the tribal chief. They acknowledge him. Jimmy and Jey Uso refuse to acknowledge him. Roman Reigns. The, another you know big reason behind this is that Roman Reigns was refusing to acknowledge The Rock, but at the same time, wasn't saying that, he wasn't saying anything. He wasn't giving any statement either way. But then he comes out and he's still wearing his head of the table merch, right, his head of the table shirt. You know, 
The Rock loses, and, and Roman Reigns, you know, makes the comment that, uh, hey, if that's how the head of the table caves, you know, that that's that's not, you know, anything that he, there's nothing he can do about it. There's nothing he'll say about that. And, and he's just going to show out and do the best thing he can for the bloodline, you know, from where he's at. And then he goes out and he puts on a great match and, you know, eh, he, he hasn't done himself or anyone any favors by not saying anything and, and I think it escalates to this it boils over to this big match that we're having here and you'll notice there's no Rikishi right where's Rikishi in all of this well he, he's playing a very neutral role you know he acknowledges the rock as the tribal chief but at the same time he doesn't want to go against his sons right we had that tag team match he said it was the hardest thing he's ever had to do in his life and he's not going to fight his sons um, and, and that he was going to stay out of this. He's, we've seen him have talks with Jimmy and Jay in the back, you know, hey, man, this is how things are done. You guys have to accept this. They absolutely refuse to. You know. So here we are. You know, this traditional Survivor Series match where, hey, we could see it get as lopsided as, as 3v1, right? But, uh, you know, what I find interesting about this is that uh, both of these men have put so much trust and and efforts in the bloodline, in their family, that they've gone as far as to say that, hey, even if they get eliminated, whichever team is the lone survivor, right, if Jey Uso ends up being the last person left and wins this whole match, hey, Roman Reigns is going to be the guy, right, for getting him there. If Umaga ends up being the last person here, wins this match, hey, The Rock is going to be the guy for getting him there, right? They've clearly made their alliances, and and, and they're they've clearly all spoken, you know, their their allegiance and and who they are loyal to. And honestly, I think that you know Yokozuna and Umaga, I think that they just are are really traditionalists. They just respect and understand the tradition uh, within their bloodline. They respect and understand this is the way things go. The Rock won fair and square, and they're fighting for that. I think we have Jimmy and Jey Uso. They're, they're really the ones causing the rift here. They're really the ones challenging those traditions, challenging uh, you know th those ways, and they're like, hey, man, you know, let let the the new generation usher in. Let the new generation rightfully take over. But Umaga, Yokozuna, they're saying, "Hey, we can't just give it to you. You got to earn it, young bucks." And they're putting them through it here. But let's let's uh, you know, as interesting as the storyline is. Let's look at the match that's actually happening at hand. We have Roman Reigns probably at the top of his game, better than we've seen him in this entire series. He's where he's at in the power rankings makes him a 99 overall. Ooh, we've seen some great tag team work from the Usos and Roman Reigns. I think that they definitely have a, a bit of a chemistry advantage, if you will. But, you know, we've seen some... Ooh. Some... Absolute dominance from Umaga, from Yokozuna. We've seen, you know, hey, Umaga, we have to remember, this is a man that was undefeated for a very long time in WWE. This is a man who, you know, gave everybody the business, right? Who, you know, put everybody to bed with that Samoan spike at one point or another. Uh, a man of absolute aggression and brutality who bulldozed through people. And, oh, and we see Yokozuna going for that super kick, but eating a big boot by Roman Reigns. And, hey, Roman Reigns gonna going to be smart. He's going to tag out on this one. I think the challenge comes from the fact that Umaga is a big boy. Yokozuna is a big boy. And when you have these titans in your corner, um, are you really, really going to be prepared to face them? Oh, but Jimmy going to fight out of that. What I thought was maybe a Samoan spike was about to be delivered. 
But as you see here, Jimmy's got a cut above his left eye. He's got a cut above his left eye, and it doesn't look great, folks. It doesn't look great for him, and you got to think, with the Survivor Series match being the style of match that it is, the longer it goes on, the worse it's going to be for him specifically and overall for their team. But I think with that super kick, I think I think Umaga maybe have a, has a cut on his face. Ooh, might have been busted open there. And, hey, we might look at a double count out here. You never know. It's happened before in these Survivor Series matchups, and Ref getting all the way up to a six count. I will say this. I, I think that uh, Team Bring It, man, they've done a great job of staying fresh, tagging in and out. Jimmy Uso. Have I been calling him Jay Uso this whole time? Jimmy Uso. Looks like he's in trouble, huh? Not looking too hot. Jay's going to come flying in. Going to break up the pin, but Yokozuna's going to get in the ring too. Going to throw Jay out. And now... He's looking to decimate Jay on the side of the ring. Meanwhile, I think, does Jay Uso have a cut on him as well? Does he have, do I see blood on his face? Are they both busted open? Oh, smooth neck breaker by Jimmy Uso delivered there. Oh, beautiful super kick. Lining the rock up. Oh. And now he's going to display. He's going to put on a display of offense, Budumaga. Keeping his head clear. Oh! Only to get it super kicked off of his shoulders. And now Jimmy's going to tag in Roman. And Roman would love nothing more than to personally eliminate The Rock. Hits him with a Superman punch. But Yokozuna going to break things up. Oh! And then Roman Reigns going to head, but Yokozuna of all people? What is going on here? Oh, oh. And The Rock, able to slide out of trouble. Oh, able to get a nice little power slam in there. Rock's got to realize he's got no help. Oh, going to hit him with a nice spine buster. Going to go for the cover, but both Usos going to get in the ring. Oh, Jimmy going to break it up. Just now the rock. Uh oh. Oh. Chuck and Jimmy off the ring. Turns his attention back to Roman Reigns. Like I said, these two men would love more. Uh, would love nothing more. Sorry. Than to be the ones to eliminate each other. They've had. Uh oh. Oh, and we're seeing it. The People's Champ going to deliver the most electrifying move in all of sports entertainment history. The people's elbow, Ma! dead center of the ring, rolls through on the cover, smooth tuck of the leg. Oh. I think that's Jey Uso getting in, making the save. Now Rock's going to chuck him out of the ring. Uh-oh. Oh. Great clothesline from the Rock, and now he's looking to tag out. Yokozuna. Hey. Yokozuna is... is Put on some good matches before. Oh, they fought these Usos before. Oh, come up with a loss, but still look good doing it. Yokozuna is, if anything, proven to be beatable in his time on this series. Uh oh, As we see Yokozuna. Uh, we, we like to focus, you know, a lot on the newer, younger talent, right? But, hey, some of these uh, older generation stars, they can't be denied. They have the star power. You know, they show up, they make the impression. I mean, Ric Flair, your 17-time champ, you know, putting in the work, getting the dubs, right? You, you have The Rock coming back, you know, trying to get that tribal chief spot. But now Yokozuna looking to take the count out. Huh? Oh, wait. Going to break the count? What are you doing? You should have just let Roman Reigns be eliminated. Oh. 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 
But hey, there's too much pride in this family for that. Uh-oh. Oh! What a DDT. This is looking rough. Oh, man. Yokozuna can't even make it. Roman Reigns goes to throw him in the barricade. Yokozuna's body doesn't even allow him to make it. And now ref up to a count of six. Up to a count of seven. Yokozuna going to get in the ring, though. Uh oh Going to waste the big dog up and over. Oh. Usos, though, not going to tag themselves in, which I find very interesting, at least not while Yokozuna's looking, which is smart. But now they're going to look for the tag. They're going to tag himself in, exchange. Ooh. And now it's Jay on Umaga. I believe it's Jay Uso in the ring here. My mistake, Jimmy Uso again. Keep calling Jimmy J. A great Samoan splash from the top. Going to go straight for the cover. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And Jimmy going to fight hard out of that one. And now, Yokozuna tagged back in again. Team bring it. They've done a great job staying fresh. Staying on top of these youngins. Uh-oh. And Jay going to tag himself in. Beautiful tag. Yokozuna didn't quite see it. Oh, what a DDT. Oh, my gosh. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Ooh, that roll through. That super kick. Going for the splash. Roman's going to stay in the ring. Oh, ooh. Overshot him. No. He overshot him. Now, now he's going to drag him back. And he's just going to go for the cover. Yokozuna's just too much weight. Too big of a boy to be dragging around like that, huh? You got got that, that big gut, that gamma gut that he's got there. And now he's just going to drag Jey Uso over to the corner. He's going to, oh, he's going to slam him down. Now he's going to pick up Umaga. Oh, 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 that's a lot of weight. To be slammed down on you. Jeez Louise. Oh my goodness. Don't know why I can't break this accent. <laughs> and then Umaga's gonna brutalize him some more. And he's gonna go for a cover. And now it's Jey Uso. Digging deep. Fighting hard, huh? Jeez Louise. This, is, this match is a lot of. Digging deep, huh? This match is on all fronts. Everyone trying to dig down, trying to find that extra level, that extra, that extra bit of it to apply to this match. And you see him doing that. It opens up the door for for other people to get involved in Jimmy Uso, Jay Uso. Both looking so good here, Jay. Going to the top yet again. Going to splash. Oh, all over the rock. Going to go straight for the cover. Roman Reigns going to make sure no one's in to break this up. Wait. The rock was able to kick out of that? He really got his shoulder up? That's what you're going to tell me? Hey, another splash by Jay, though. Going for the cover yet again. The Rock's still kicking out? Wow. And now Jay's like, yeah, I'm fed up, bro. I'm done. I'm done, bro. Now he's going to call Jimmy in. Ooh. Great little Samoan drop there, huh? I'm going to roll the lifeless body of the rock over, but now Umaga going to come in and break things up. The one time that they don't have it covered. Uh-oh. Oh! Umaga breaks things up. Rock. Finding that second win, getting that spine buster in. Gonna tag Umaga in. And yeah, he's gonna go straight for the cover. Smart, smart. But now the Rock and Roman Reigns both in the ring. Umaga's gonna get to Roman before Rock can. Gonna go, uh oh. Toss him out and over on his own corner and then turn his attention immediately to Jimmy. Uh oh. Ah! 
gonna slam him down, and I don't, I think you're not. Uh oh, you're, you're in a place where you don't want to be. Oh, that's a Moen spike. You see Jimmy's body. You see his legs on that. When you get so hard, hit so hard in the throat, your legs go flying. Oh my goodness. And Jimmy still, still going for the Uso splash. The Rock and Yokozuna are distracted by Jay on the outside. Jimmy's going to be able to, oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, we're so deep into this match to not have a single elimination. He's going to go for the top again. The Rock going to meet him at the corner. Going to rush the move, but it doesn't matter. Going to go for the cover. Yokozuna couldn't break it up. And Umaga. Umaga's the first man to be eliminated. And Team Bring It. You have to be wondering, right? You have to be wondering. A man down. How are things going to change from here on out? Oh! Now Roman, of course, gladly. Now that they're a man up, Roman's wanting that tag in. Oh! And he's going to get a little payback on that headbutt earlier. And something tells me Yokozuna's got a better headbutt out of the two. I just, you know, got a feeling there. Oh, he's calling for it. Oh, looking over at Jimmy and Jay. Challenging them to break up the pin. And they run it. Oh! And a challenge it was. It was answered, but not successfully. I guess it bought Roman enough time to get the guillotine locked in in the center of the ring. And he's yanking it. He's yanking it. Yokozuna taps. It's a three on one. The Rock gets in the ring. Oh! Dodges the Superman. Oh! Dodges Superman punch one time, but not the second time. And this is absolute domination. If The Rock wants to remain the Tribal Chief, if he wants to hold that spot at the head of the table, he's going to have to go through Roman Reigns and the Usos entirely by himself. And you know that the Usos, you know Roman Reigns, have to be loving a three-on-one. And you know that this is what they want. They didn't want to eliminate The Rock early. They wanted to eliminate Yokozuna. They wanted to eliminate Umaga. They wanted it to be a three-on-one in the end. They wanted The Rock to be by himself. And they wanted The Rock to have to absolutely rip the head of the table chair out from underneath the Roman Reigns. They want him to have to prove he's the tribal chief before anyone acknowledges him as such. And oh, hey, he's looking good though here. A nice people's elbow. Gonna get the three count before Jimmy can get in the ring. Well now, that three on one advantage, it's dwindled down to a two on one. Now Jimmy Uso's in the ring. Now the Rocks looking to fight through Jimmy Uso. Uh oh, oh. Tag switching it up. And yeah, Roman comes in. And, and yeah, going to get that guillotine. The Rock, he fought valiantly, but Roman Reigns. Reclaiming his seat at the head of the table. Proving that he is the tribal chief. And let's just hope that... Let's just hope that this family can, can move on. Can come together. Can accept the way of things as they are. Let's hope. Well, there you have it. Uh, uh, just, uh, wow. Uh, all of the energy is out of my body. <laughs> the, the show took so much out of me uh, from the amazing debuts that we've seen, the uh, title defenses that we saw, the, the, you know, title changes that we saw, 
um, everything top to bottom. There wasn't a single match that disappointed in even the slightest way tonight, other than the fact that we didn't get to see that cash-in from Finn Balor that was promised to us. But we did see a cash-in tonight. Uh, so, you know, I, I wasn't a total liar uh, in the intro. So that's always good to see. Um, so many things, right? Where does Ric Flair go from here? Uh, how does the bloodline, you know, after such a civil war, come together to push each other to, to reclaim gold that they want? It, you know, again, everything is absolutely in the air. Um, I I can't wait to get to Monday Night Raw to see where things go from here. Um, and, and, you know, I I want to see what the matches that the CPU throws together. I might just roll with it, to be honest, because, I again, I personally, just witnessing everything f fresh off the cuff, you know, right, a hot take right here, right now, I, I have no clue where anything is going. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I uh, hope you guys tune in for the next episode of Monday Night Raw. It's definitely bound to be a good one, you know, following such a great Survivor Series. It is going to be quite some time before we get to uh, the Royal Rumble. It's going to be, I think we're going to have quite a lot of episodes because we want to build that tension. In, and because I have literally, I have no foundation to work with. I have nothing to, to go on here. We have to take the time to build some storylines. So I hope you guys tune in. You know, night in, night out, see how these storylines build. Uh, you know, definitely going to be looking forward to Royal Rumble and, and what we have there. But uh, uh, until then, though, I just want y'all to remember, man, I love y'all. Stay safe. Peace.